Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday night. I hope that you have enjoyed the cooler uh, day, dogwood winter, as they like to say. And uh, just a great, an incredible opportunity it is for us to be able to connect in this format and to join with you live right now in Bible study. Um, before we begin, I just wanted to make a, a couple of, uh, a, a, of important announcements. If you have paid attention to the news today, you have probably already heard that uh, Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, has issued a shelter-in-place um, order that will go into effect on Friday. And so in preparation for that and in preparation for our Easter service, I um, want to just invite and encourage each and every one of you that are able um, to come by and to pick up um, some res a resource for your Easter service to join with us on April the 12th. Easter is just a week and a half away. This coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. And in preparation for that of us not being able to be uh, able to worship together in service, uh, we have put together an Easter box. And uh, this Easter box is just something that you can drive through here on the church parking lot and be able to uh, pick up inside will be uh, communion cups for you and your family. You want to know what that reminds what me that? of? What? Remember, family. When we were dating, one whole summer we were apart. And our birthdays are in the summertime. So I thought I'd be clever. I sent him a birthday in a box. <laughs> So that's what that reminds me of. And so uh, we get to do Easter in a box. And so inside the box for everybody will be um, uh, uh, elements of communion uh, that you'll be able to, to use. And there'll be uh, the prayer card, prayer card, just different things um, as part of that Easter uh, service. And so if you are able to come by tomorrow, we will be having distributing those uh, in a drive through manner in the parking lot from noon tomorrow on Thursday, April 2nd, until 7 p.m., tomorrow night. And so feel free to drop by and just drive through. We won't have to get out of your car. We will be practicing good uh, social distancing even in doing this as much as possible. And, uh, and if you are uh, curious about other people that you live near or family members that uh, are interested in participating in Easter with us but are not able to come by, um, please uh, check with them and feel free to pick up a box for them as well and deliver it to them. Um, and so and these boxes are not limited to just uh, our members or regular attenders. If you're watching this and you're in the Livonia area and would like to participate in Easter with us, we invite you to come by uh, and just drive through and, uh, and let us wave at you and let us be able to connect in preparation for Easter. And so I'm excited about, I believe that even in this format, and even though it won't be quite the same, I think that God is wanting to do some incredible things this Easter season as uh, the gospel is able to, to reach into ways that we never even thought possible. Yeah, um, I was telling Pastor that after last Wednesday, I just had this uh, revelation about our relationship with God. Um, you know, I can see Pastor face-to-face right now but I can't see you face to face but I have faith that you are on the other side of this camera and to be very honest my entire relationship with the Lord has been that way it's as if I'm on one side of the camera and I'm living this life before him and living this life of faith believing that he's on the other side of the camera of my life and that he's still present with me. And that was actually a comforting thought for me, knowing that if I can connect to God that way, even though I don't see him face to face, I can still connect with you that way. I miss you terribly. I'll just yes. be really honest. I miss you bunchies. Yes. My daddy and I used to say, I love you with peanut butter on top. Guess what? I love you with peanut butter on top. <laughs> And I really miss you, but I do have this faith in my heart that not only is God on the other side of the camera of my life, you're on the other side of that camera too. And I love you, family and friends, and just uh, keep trying to connect to everybody as much as you possibly can. Yes. 
And so uh, as we begin tonight, I um, want to open up with prayer. If uh, you didn't catch that, again, 12 to 7 tomorrow, uh, drive through here at the church and pick up uh, your Easter box. And we'll post those times uh, in the comments. And of course, we'll send out a reminder um, as well. And so, but I just want to just begin with a word of prayer. We've had multiple uh, requests that have been called in um, over the last few days. Uh, continue to remember Tommy McGee. Also, continue to remember uh, Mike Blakely. Also, uh, remember Tommy and Betty's friend, uh, Roy Dow, um, and uh, got some um, grim news from the doctor today, but we know that God is able to heal and God is able to do some great, great and mighty things. And so we want to remember him. Also, continue to remember Sarah Alexander, um, her family as well, and many unspoken needs that have been called in. And of course, we want to be praying for um, our doctors, our nurses, our healthcare workers, uh, not only right here at Sacred Heart Hospital in Livonia, but um, all of those around the nation and around the world um, asking for God's hand of protection and leading uh, them in this, in this crisis with the battling this virus. And so if you would just pause for a moment and let us pray together as we begin this evening. And God, we just thank you and we praise you so much. Uh, that God, that we are able to come before you tonight and that we are able to worship you, that we are able to uh, study your word and that God, that we can be encouraged while we may not be able to be uh, able to see each other in person, God, that's still able to connect digitally. And I pray that you will just touch and move and meet each and every one of these needs, God, that you can do miraculous things, that you can uh, pronounce uh, healing and just uh, let your healing hand touch by the power of your spirit in each of these lives, these unspokens, and those that we've shared here tonight. And God, I ask for you to just touch uh, our healthcare workers, God, that you're, you will just put a hedge of protection around them, lead them, guide them, give them wisdom, God, as, uh, as answers and, and different things are uh, looked to. And as they are uh, literally the hands of Christ extended into our community, into being able to care for those that are sick, and I pray that you will not only protect them, but God, Lord, give them that compassion, God, and and that leading God as they uh, do your work of bringing healing and hope in the lives of people through medical care. God, be with us as we study your word tonight. We just love you and we praise you. And I ask for your blessing upon each and every person that is joining us here tonight. That God, that you're able to move and speak to them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I uh, want to dive in tonight, and we're going to kind of pick up in Isaiah 61. Uh, we started this look into Isaiah 61 last Wednesday night, and I uh, want to go uh, further and kind of looking a little bit deeper. And so to, to begin, I want to uh, revisit um, our text, which is Isaiah 61, uh, verses uh, 1 through 3. And uh, those, uh, this is what God's Word says. In Isaiah 61 and verse 1, it begins, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness and the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Last week we began looking at uh, the, the three actions here that we see God taking in our lives, that he heals the brokenhearted, that he proclaims liberty to the captives, and that he comforts all who mourn. And as we looked at that last week, we understood that the call of that is to, for us to ultimately be trees of righteousness or oaks of righteousness, if you would, and uh, that strength and that stability that is not of our own uh, or of earth, but it is of God and is of the heavenly realm and 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 so and the purpose of that is so that he may be glorified and if you didn't get to check out last week I encourage you um, to the video is posted on Facebook and YouTube and, and you can go and check that out um, if you missed last week uh, but when we think about this and uh, I don't know uh, how you are at birthdays or at Christmas time but uh, one of the common things that happens around gift-giving times is exchange periods. 
Uh, in fact, uh, there has been many times that I have had to stand in line at a store because uh, a shirt or a pair of pants or something, a piece of clothing that I have been given it does not fit. And sometimes that's because I have gained weight and that no, the clothing, the size, the, my size has changed. Uh, sometimes it means because the person just accidentally bought me the wrong size. And sometimes it actually has happened where it's been too big and I've had to go and exchange it for something smaller. And so when those things happen, you stand in line and, you, and, you, and I've taken the things many times even without a receipt and some stores are great at working with you as a customer and, and able to exchange. Uh, one time at Kohl's I had gone to uh, exchange a particular dress shirt and um, it, was, it, was, it was one of those cases where it was too big and um, I really liked the shirt and so I wanted to exchange it for the same shirt, just different size. And as you would know it, of course, they didn't have the exact same uh, shirt. So I began to have to go through it. And it was a really simple process. I was able to go and, and uh, find what I needed and bring it back to the counter. And they were able just to do an even exchange uh, with the item. And when I think about that whole idea of, of an exchange, I think of this, this passage that we've read here tonight. Isaiah 61 talks to us about this great exchange, if you would, that God does and desires to do in every single one of our lives. And that's what I want to really focus in on tonight as we uh, reflect upon three exchanges that God does and that he promises us through Isaiah 61. The first exchange, the first exchange that God offers to us is that he offers to give us this beauty for ashes. And uh, when, throughout Scripture, ashes are an incredible uh, symbol of grief and repentance and sorrow. And as we look to, part of the custom was that they would take, uh, in, in mourning, they would take ashes and they would uh, put them upon their head. And, and it was a sign or a symbol to everyone who saw them that they were in a period of of, of sadness, and they were in a, uh, and so ashes became symbolic and very closely tied with that. And and in fact, in Genesis chapter eighteen and verse twenty seven, um, we even see Abraham. He's he's talking to God, and Abraham uh, he asks uh, this question of the Lord by even expressing his own humility and his own lowliness, if you would, in God's presence because of how great and big God is. And and he's and Abraham says to God, he says, "Now that I have been so bold." As to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes. Abraham's talking about this dust and ashes because he's contrasting his lowliness, his, his, uh, his, uh, his mortality, his uh, humanity in the middle of this in comparison to the dignity and the splendor and the awesome wonder of who God is and that he pales in comparison. And so every time we look or we turn around and we find ashes, it's going to be either with sorrow or this, uh, this depiction of lowliness and, and uh, it's truly a sign of mourning. We even see it with King David. Uh, King David writes of even eating ashes in Psalm 102 to prove the depth of his sorrow and his lament and his repentance. And the prophet Daniel, even uh, we read, uses ashes to be able to show his distress and his repentance. And so uh, we think about that. And here God says that he's going to replace our ashes with beauty. He's going to give us beauty. And, and maybe you look around and, and maybe when we're in the middle of those pity parties and we're in the middle of that sorrow or that repentance or that mourning or that lowliness, we really don't feel a whole lot of beauty within us. We don't feel that we carry ourselves with beauty or with dignity. But God says that he has come so that we can have, he can give us beauty for our ashes. And literally what God is really telling us here is that as we humble ourselves before him and we repent of all that we have done wrong and where we have fallen short and we confess that we are nothing without him, it is there that we are able to say, God, I need you to exchange my ashes, my lowliness, and give me a beauty. And that beauty is not based on physical outward looks. It is not based upon uh, anything that we can uh, doll ourselves up to look like, but it is a beauty that is based in Him and His splendor. It is a beauty that is based upon the splendor of an Almighty God who declares us that His glory is able to be poured out and wrapped around us and to descend upon us. And in fact, Psalm chapter 8 and verse 5 says that God crowned mankind, crowned you and I, 
with glory and with honor. And because we share in God's beauty, and because we share in that, we are able to look to God and and revel in His glory and return to Him in worship and be able to have confidence in a beauty that is not of our own, but is truly heavenly. Two things that come to mind while I'm listening to you, Pastor, is um, I want to encourage us tonight that wherever there are ashes, there had to be fire. Mm-hmm. So God is, and when when things are being burnt, it, it, all the things that really don't matter, they just kind of dissipate and go away. And so what's left behind is the ash, is the the original elements, and mm-hmm. you know it's from dust that we were made anyway. And how wonderful that we uh, serve a God, and and I'm picturing him. He's kneeling down, and he's right there beside us, and all that has been burnt off of us, and and we're smelling like smoke, and we're ashy, and he kneels down right beside us, and he begins to get some of those ashes. And like a wonderful, incredible artist, he takes that that ash mm-hmm. as if it's, and he begins to do art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God just puts it right back down to dust so that in the nature of who he is, he's creator. That's mm-hmm. how we first meet him anyway. He's creator. And then he's going to take that and turn something sure. that we see that's just left over nothing. Mm-hmm. And he's going to make it into something beautiful. I remember one time I went with some students to an art gallery and, and it was actually for, to see some, uh, some Picasso works. And, you know, Picasso was the guy that did all that weird stuff, (laughs) but, um, he had used uh, charcoal chalk Mm -hmm. and he had done, um, some work. And that was some of the most beautiful things I had ever seen because you could see where Picasso would start something, and then you could see where his hand had been, where he rubbed it out, mm-hmm. and he redid it. So you could see the effort in it. And I can just imagine God mm-hmm. taking that ash, and he'll begin to do something, and then maybe the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they go, mm, wait a second, and they're going to rub that out just a little mm-hmm. bit. And shade that in just a little bit. And then they're going to take it over here and they're going to work it out. And, and it's something that seems so devastating like fire mm-hmm. of our lives. He's going to turn it into something beautiful. Yeah. Yes. The second thing that, that God tells us is that he does this exchange is that he is going to give us an oil of joy for mourning. Um, so in other words, what he's telling us here is that it was not enough to give us beauty for our ashes. He's also adding this oil uh, with which to enhance the beauty and the, and being able to be able to say that it's not just a matter of washing the ashes away potentially with that oil, but it's a matter of being able to, uh, kind of, uh, soothe or uh, anoint uh, that mourning that is going to lie within us and lo- lay beneath the, the surface. It's interesting when we think about mourning, do you, we really realize, and you've ever really thought about that in many respects, that mourning uh, was really one of the, the first utterances of the Holy Spirit. I was reminded today from a, a pastor friend that uh, it was uh, that there at the beginning of creation, uh, that we see that uh, there in the form and the void uh, that uh, we are able to come and see the Holy Spirit hovering upon the water. And Paul even writes that the whole creation groans and suffers. And so when the first act of sin uh, corrupted the creation and corrupted this world uh, and corrupted the good, uh, that we see this this groaning or this uh, this mourning on the part of the Spirit. And so throughout history, we see that, that we as humanity and all of that has been able to come. And, and so often, uh, we lose sight of uh, that presence of God, even in the middle of our mourning, even in the middle of our sorrow and our pain and what we're going through. And so as the Holy Spirit is allowed to come in and to be present with us in the middle of that uh, repentance or the middle of that mourning, the middle of that that suffering. It is that same spirit who is the source of that oil, that oil of joy. 
Uh, in fact, that the text talks about that oil of joy for mourning. The mourning was obviously very present and, and very active in that moment of when this is being proclaimed. But in the same way that the mourning is active and present in the now, so is the oil of joy. Mm. It is not just sometimes we get so focused on the what's going to happen down the road and, and uh, that we lose sight of the joy of the right now. Mm-hmm. I can't help but think of uh, the, the children of, of Israel as they were getting ready to cross the Jordan River and as they're getting ready to go into the promised land. They kept looking forward to the, uh, that joy and the promise being fulfilled in their lives. But before they ever crossed the promised land, guess what? There was still an oil of joy upon them because God was providing for them. He was taking care of them. And I think that sometimes we get so uh, used to looking ahead and and maybe even right now in this season with the coronavirus, maybe I'm sure many of you are like us that we can't wait until this uh, self-isolating and and all of this period ends and it's over and we can begin to resume some normalcy of life. But I want to challenge us this evening that don't become so focused on what we're going to do when this is over that we miss out on the oil of joy that is present and that is here even now. Even in the middle of all of these things, we need to make sure that we allow God to do this great exchange. The exchange isn't a matter of something that's going to happen just in the future, but it's an exchange that God wants to happen in your life and in your heart even now, even yes. tonight. Yes. And whatever you're dealing with, allow yes. Him to allow the Holy Spirit to yes. come into and sweep into your life yes. and anoint and soothe and cover the mourning and the sadness that may be present in your mind and heart and allow that oil of joy through the power of the Spirit to cover you. You you know, when uh, this is being written, the people of the time knew the process with which oil would be gathered. They would harvest the olives and they would literally put them through a pressing and crushing period. Mm -hmm. There's no oil that comes out if there's no pressing and crushing. And this season, and to be very honest, many seasons of our lives are going to be, have been, and will will continue to be hard in our lives. And they they do feel like we're being pressed and and crushed. But the beauty of the, the Lord is, he says, even in the middle of that pressing and that crushing there can be joy present through that all through all of that i can't think of anyone else in history who was more pressed or crushed than jesus himself Mm -hmm. and out of him more than just blood and water flowed Mm -hmm. it was the he the word of god said that it was for the joy Mm -hmm. that was set before him he endured the cross and I can hear Paul telling the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 4, he, verse 8, he says, We are pressed on every mm-hmm. side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. So family, you may be pressed tonight. You may be crushed in your spirit But I just want to encourage us that through that, I hope, even before we just get a a hint of of the feeling of the oil of the Mm -hmm. Lord, that we'll hear, smell the aroma of the oil coming out. And Mm -hmm. we'll know, "Mm, there it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, Mm -hmm. for your joy. That's right. And I think it's, maybe you ask yourself, well, what joy is there in the right now? If nothing else, if everything else is really, truly falling apart, first of all, I believe there's always little nuggets of joy that we can find. But even if everything else seems to be falling apart, we can always find joy in knowing that 
we have joy in our redemption and in our atonement. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Because the reality is, is, is that if you and I, if we are believers in Christ, He will not love us more when we get yes. to heaven than He already loves you and I now. Jesus. He loves you. He loves us. He loves us infinitely um, in an infinite amount at this instant, at this yes. moment. It is not something that we have to wait for. It is not something that we have to earn. It's not something that we have to be good enough for. But His love is extended to us and it is that love and that atonement that he offers to us, that redemption, that salvation, that if nothing else, we can always find a moment of joy. And remember how this passage, this text even begins. It says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And so this great exchange, all of these exchanges that we're talking about, the root, the source that we're talking about is the Spirit of the Lord God. And just as that Spirit of the Lord uh, is able to be within us, is that same Spirit that was upon Christ, that we are able to find that joy in Him. And the third and final uh, great exchange that we find here in Isaiah 61 in these first few verses is the, the exchange of the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And, um, you know, when we think about, when I think about this, the best picture that I can have with regards to this is to begin with this idea of the spirit of heaviness. And the spirit of heaviness is almost like I picture a blanket. I picture a blanket that just kind of surrounds us, that covers us, and it, it just weighs heavy upon us. Yet last week we talked about a heaviness in a good way, in the sense of the Lord's presence. But when it's a heaviness in the sense of being down or being discouraged... Uh, we are reminded that it is this, it is this, it is a blanket, a spirit of heaviness that maybe uh, surrounds us. And when we are surrounded by this kind of a blanket, could you imagine me going and trying to run a, a 5K or me trying to go about uh, being active and productive with this, with the big blanket wrapped around me? I would trip, I would fall, I would make a fool out of myself. It would not be pretty. I would do that without a blanket. <laughs> and so, and so, but yet this is how many. Many of us are trying to function as believers. We are walking around as if we have this spirit of heaviness, this blanket of heaviness uh, upon us and surrounding us. There's been a lot of references throughout this whole uh, pandemic, you know, about the zombie apocalypse. And, and I think that, unfortunately, that too many of us have had spiritual zombie uh, things going on in our life because we've been walking around surrounded and covered and weighted down by this blanket or spirit of heaviness that is upon us and that is around us and that it, it's almost as if we can't uh, find our way out to find our way home. But the exchange that God says that he does is he takes the spirit of heaviness away and that he gives us a garment of praise. And I, I have here a, a just a, a, a sport coat and and uh, we'll see how talented I am at getting this on while I'm sitting down. Uh, but uh, I'm not very talented, as you can see. Uh, but uh, I've, got the, I've got it all tangled up behind me here. Uh, but when we, when we think about this, uh, we, this garment of praise, a garment, a coat, a shirt... Something that we have, it is able to be fitted to us. If you have a suit, you've got to go to uh, a, a tailor and have it measured. And it is, it is contoured to who we are. And what I love about this exchange and this word picture that we have from God is that He exchanges this uh, cover, this blanket, the spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise. A praise that is tailored specifically to you and I and what we have gone through. Remember that praise magnifies God. It adores and lifts him up. And it is that praise uh, that we are able to say it, it becomes like a magnifying glass. And as we put on this garment of praise, it allows us to magnify God, to, to make him larger than the other things around us and larger than our circumstances so that in that moment it helps us to focus on him rather than our circumstances. If I'm going to have on a garment of praise, it is tailored to me and it is specific for what I have gone through and what I have endured. And so I encourage us to fill our days with praise. Even if we don't feel like it, even if 
We have that blanket of heaviness or that spirit of heaviness upon us. Worship Him anyway. Praise Him anyway. Because it is there that we're able to see Him magnified in our life. And the circumstances around us begin to diminish. They begin to pale. They begin to all of a sudden not seem such a big deal as they once did. Um, some versions say, I think the New King James mm -hmm. Version says garment of praise instead mm -hmm. of a spirit of heaviness. Some versions say instead of despair. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, a number of years ago, I had a dream that the Lord had given me. That I had this encounter with the Lord in the dream. And um, God likes post-it notes because in my dream, he was mm -hmm. working really quickly. And he just wrote a little something on a post-it note and handed it to me and sent me on my way. And when I went to look at the... Um, post-it note he told me don't despair about the little things and I, I began to do some research about the word despair and it's very rarely used in the word mm -hmm. of God we we see it here mm -hmm. and we also see it in that second Corinthians 4 where Paul is saying we may be perplexed but we're not in despair and when you look into the original mm -hmm. meanings of the words it right. it literally paints this picture of like having a total nervous breakdown now those things those things are real when people are going through them mm -hmm. so i do not minimize that at all so uh, work to get mm -hmm. as much help uh, physically and mentally as you possibly can in this season but one thing that i've learned is a tool for me um through the years as someone who has wrestled and uh, been in that mm -hmm. spirit of heaviness so mm -hmm. uh, at different points in my life that putting on the garment of praise mm -hmm. has been one of the major tools of breakthrough for me in my mm -hmm. life. Um, I, I think we have to remember that, you know, we have to put it on. Mm -hmm. God makes it, mm -hmm. but we have to wear it. Mm -hmm. You know, God, he crafts the oil. Yeah. But we have to get under the oil spout. Right. Um, he's the one who who is the artist from mm -hmm. the ashes, but we have to be near him enough and give him permission to gather up those ashes to turn it into right. to beauty. Mm -hmm. um, so there, it's not just about just sitting there going, okay, God, I'm here. Mm -hmm. You do your thing because you're God. Mm -hmm. There is something active here um, right. that we see uh, that God wants us to do in these scriptures. So I want to encourage us that we need to be active in the process. It's not just one-sided. Can God do it all? Well, yes, he can. Mm -hmm. But if he wanted to do that, all of that, why would he have made us to begin with? So he gets joy and pleasure out of us using what he has given us. That's right. So using the beauty he's mm -hmm. given us, using the um, the oil that he has given us, using the garment of mm -hmm. praise that he's given us. And that's, that's right. where we go on and that's when he's like, yeah, I'm going to display you. Mm -hmm. The reason why I want you to use it, I want to display you for my splendor. It's, it's for his pleasure that he allows us, encourages us um, to do that. And praise is a choice. That's right. A yeah. choice mm -hmm. and a privilege. And I know you and I were talking about earlier about, mm -hmm. uh, about this evening. And yeah. I, I had said to you, I think we need to pause yes. and have praise. Yes. Is what we need to do right where, wherever mm -hmm. we are. That's right. And I want us to do that. I want us to um, just take a moment and just to be able to give God praise. Because as we praise, it magnifies Him. And it helps us in this, these exchanges. This, these, this exchange of being able to know that He is giving us beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning. And He's giving us a garment of praise for our heaviness and, or despair. And so Tina, uh, as Tina to be able to, to lead us in being able to help us to put on that praise this evening. Yeah, I had actually said to, I had messaged him earlier today while he was over mm -hmm. here at the church, and I was like, 
you know, um, Pastor, I just don't know if, if I really need to sit beside you tonight. And he said, why? And I said, I just don't really feel like I can um, be the encourager um, tonight. Well, why? Well, because I'm discouraged. So <laughs> how am I going to encourage when I'm discouraged in that, when I feel like I don't have it all together? And um, in the process of getting ready for this evening, um, I just heard, you know, my Papa Burrell would say, um, just praising when you can't do anything else, mm -hmm. just praising. Try. Right. And so what we're about to do is have a time of praise. Now, um, I'm kind of the singer of the family. <laughs> um, I'm not. Pastor's not, so he's going to be singing from his heart. But we're just going to kind of enter a time of, mm -hmm. and kind of let you in on an authentic and real kind of moment of mm -hmm. what happens when we're with the Lord privately. I know many times you guys get to see that as the worship pastor, I'll do that publicly, but um, you don't always get to see what happens in private. So this is just going to mm -hmm. be just kind of a real mm -hmm. and raw, authentic moment of um, just entering in before the Lord. And know this, I'm right there with you. I'm choosing right now to put on the garment of praise mm -hmm. instead of a spirit of despair. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name God you're my master you're my savior you're Jesus like the fragrance hallelujah <laughs> after the rain you are Jesus, my Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim thy kings and kingdoms, they're gonna all Pass away, God, but there's something everlasting yes. about your name. Tis so sweet mm. to trust in you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just to take you at your word, oh God, just to rest upon your promise and just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I've proved you o'er and o'er, Jesus, 
Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you more. Thank you for your grace, oh God. Thank you, praise God. Thank you for your amazing grace, oh God. Amazing grace. Yes. How sweet the sound, hallelujah, yes, hallelujah. that saved a wretch like me. was blind but now <clears throat> I see twas grace hmm. that taught my oh, heart oh, to fear and grace oh hmm. my fears you still relieve yes. oh. how precious oh, did the the hour, hallelujah, mm. I first believed oh. through many dangers, toils, and snares. Yes, God. I have already come. It's your grace that brought me safe. Thus far, and your grace will lead me home. Now, when we've <laughs> been there, hallelujah, yes, ten thousand years, <laughs> bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to see. God's praise than when we first yes. begun. I love you, Lord. Yes, God. Oh, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. We praise you, God, and we worship you, Lord. I love you, Lord. you Lord. We exalt You're you and we praise your holy name, God. That you are worthy of all praise. Your grace, your mercy, your love, your power and your might. God, we just honor and exalt you. And that God, tonight, we choose to put on that garment of praise. That God, to magnify you, to make you larger than life within us, within our minds and within our hearts. And that as we do, God, I just pray that God right now, oh, that Lord, that you will truly do that great exchange, God, giving us that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, giving us that oil of joy for mourning or despair, that God, that Lord, that you will just touch us and that you will give us beauty for ashes, God. And right now, we just come before you and we say, God, how worthy you are, that we can praise you, that we can call upon you, that we can exalt you this evening. God, I pray that you will help us as we do this, God, each and every day placing you first and foremost, above and beyond circumstances. That God, I pray that right now, that God, that we just come against the spirit of fear. That God, as we praise and as we worship and as we magnify you, that God, fear will be cast out. Because God, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, God, we declare that and we pray that, God, not only for those that are listening here, but, God, for our entire state, for our nation, for our world. And that, God, that we are just trusting you and looking to you, God. We love you tonight and we praise you. Lord, let us find ourselves clothed in you, in your beauty, in your uh, anointed in your oil of joy, and wearing a garment of praise in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you guys so much for being online with us tonight. Appreciate you sticking in here with us this late. Don't forget, if you're here in the Livonia area, we invite you to drive by the church tomorrow on Thursday, April the 2nd, uh, to pick up your Easter box um, so that the uh, Easter experience can be interactive with our services um, on April the 12th. God bless you. We love you, and we'll hope to see you soon. Love you, family. Good night.